Now that we've defined what trope is, and we've uh, explained the first and second families, the Atnachta and the Sopasuk families, we're going to get into applying trope immediately, as opposed to learning it all first and then trying to apply it. So we're going to apply it to the Shema, and in order to talk about that, we have to define the Shema. So, what is the Shema? I'll tell you what it's not. The Shema is not a prayer. The Shema is not a blessing. Uh, if you've ever been taught that, that is a- absolutely incorrect. So, in fact, what is it? Well, the Shema is actually a series of quotes from the Torah, from the Bible. And the Shema, what we call the Shema, can refer to the single quote of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. That's the line that says, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, or Hero Israel, Adonai our God, Adonai is one. Uh, but we can also call the Shema the Kriyat Shema, or the recitation of the Shema. And it's two main paragraphs in the liberal or reform tradition. So the first paragraph is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, which includes Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, that being Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And it also includes uh, Numbers, the book of Numbers chapter 15, verses 40 and 41. Now, if you grew up traditional at a conservative or, or orthodox synagogue, traditional Jews also include two other paragraphs, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 through 21, and that's about the cause and effect of commandments, like if you observe these commandments, then good things will happen to you. And uh, Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 39, and that's about wearing a fringed garment known as the talit or prayer shawl. Those two paragraphs were excised from the Reform Rite or the Liberal uh, uh, Rite or Passage. I'm sorry, Rite or uh, Ritual. And uh, so we're concentrating on those two uh, top paragraphs. I want to make a side note about uh, Bible navigation because I, I talked about chapter and verse of the Bibles, and Bible. And I want to make sure that you understand uh, a couple of things about navigating the Bible because chanting trope directly uh, re- uh, relates to navigating a Torah. So uh, let's start off with something rather simple. What are the five books of Moses in order? And they are, ready? Genesis, followed by Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and finally Deuteronomy, which is my my favorite book only because it's the one that four-year-olds have the hardest time pronouncing. You get Deuteronomy or whatever. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I'm going to give you another acrostic, G-E-L-N-D. How do you remember this order? General, electric, light bulbs never dim or die, uh, especially if you buy the LED kind. They won't uh, dim on you. They're really good the last few 20 years. General Electric Light Bulbs Never Dim, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. If you want a shorthand for abbreviating those very typically, especially if you're a crossword puzzle person like I am, use G-E-N period, E-X period, L-E-V period, N-U-M period, and D-E-U-T period. Again, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, in Deuteronomy. Now, the Torah is divided up by Torah portions. Okay, so that's important to know. Uh, in Hebrew, we call a Torah portion a parasha or a sidra. Now, the Torah is also divided up by chapters and verses. And in Hebrew, we call the chapter a parak, And a verse is a pasuk, which is a word you should know because sof pasuk is an end of a verse. So it's a word we've used already. Now, chapter and verse numbers don't come from Judaism. They come from Christianity, but they're used by Jews as well to navigate the Torah. Now, when you're citing a part of the Torah, if a number follows a book, it is a chapter number. Following a colon will be a verse or a series of verses. So let's give you the example. 
DEUT period 43 colon 1 dash 8 means Deuteronomy chapter 43 verses 1 through 8. So let's see this in action. When you see Gen 3 colon 2, that's Genesis chapter 3 verse 2. The second example is Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 through 15. Leviticus chapter 4 verses 5 through 6. This next one's a little tricky. It's Numbers chapter 10, verse 4, through chapter 11, verse 3. And then finally, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 3. If that hurt your brain or I went too fast, rewind that part of the video and slow it down. It'll sound something like this. Or something like that. Hopefully it won't sound that bad. So let's get back to the Shema. So the Shema based on what we just learned, is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, and Numbers chapter 15, verses 40 through 41. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. So in the Torah, it'll be written, obviously, without the vowels, without the trope marks. But what it will be written with is this curious thing, this very large ayin and this very large dalit. And now let's just look at that in isolation. So why is it written like that? It's written like that in every single Torah around the world. If you put the two letters together, you get a Hebrew word, which means witness. So when we hear, O Israel, because the word Shema means to listen or to hear, we also need to witness or see. So you have to use all of your senses when you understand the singularity of the divine. That's one interpretation. Anyway, let's put those that ayin and the dalad back, and let's put the Shema back together. Now, if you remember in one of the previous lessons where we talked about the binding of Isaac and Abraham with his uh, knife about to kill his son, and the angel paw said Avraham, and then there was a pause. So there was this pasik, this, this vertical line, this, this pause. It's right there. And you'll see it there. So when you see that, you should take a pause when you're chanting. So now let's look at the trope marks specifically. Under the word Shema, we have the tip ha ha ha. Under Yisrael, we have et nach ta. Under the next word, Adonai, mercha. Under Eloheinu, tip ha ha ha. Under the next Adonai, we have mercha, then a pause, and finally, sof pasuk. And note, under the chet, you see a meteg. So that's going to be the, uh, the accented syllable there, echad. So if we were to combine the tropes, you would get this. Shema ha ha, Yisrael, Adonai, Eloheinu. Adonai, pause, echad. My advice is to rewind that little part of the video and follow along listening to how the trope connects to the word. I'll do it one more time for you. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, pause, echad. Note on the word Eloheinu that the accent is on the second to last syllable and not the last syllable. If you go Eloheinu, it almost makes it sound like the accent is on the nu and not on the he. So what I did is emphasize the, the he of heinu like this. Eloheinu. That way you really emphasize the accented syllable. A little bit more about how trope works. So remember that trope accents a syllable, and the stressed syllable gets the stressed music, just like I showed you in that hey nu. So let's look at it in English, all right? And let's take a, a polysyllabic word like hippopotamus. So first, let's break it up into its syllables. Hi, hip, pa, pot, a, mus. Now, where do the accents go? Is it hippopotamus? No, it is not. We put in the accents. There they are. So you have, hi, there, there's two accents in this word. You have hip, 
pa pa ta nas. Now, one of these accents is stronger than the next, and it's that one. So we've hippopotamus, right? You don't go hippopotamus. You don't go hippopotamus. It's hippopotamus. Now, if I were to put some tropes on it, I might do this. So we have a secondary accent under hip. That's why the meteg is there. And then we have the pot with the primary accent. And here, for illustration, I put an et nach ta. Now, you don't normally chant trope marks going in the English direction, so we're going to just flip that word around. And now we have hippopotamus. You've got to read it sort of backwards as if it were Hebrew. And since we have an et nach ta, and we're going to add it to hippopotamus, we're going to go like this. Hippopotamus. Notice that the music goes up on the most accented syllable of the word. Hippopotamus. I know they look cues and my brain is hurting. Let's look at a couple other uh, very long syllable, uh, multisyllabic words. So we have parallelogram, monosyllabic, and of course, everybody's favorite polysyllabic word, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Let's put in the, the most accented syllables there. We have parallelogram, monosyllabic, and then anti-disestablishmentarianism, right? So all I'm trying to point out here is if I were to put an et nach ta in any one of those words, you would move up on the accented syllable like this. Parallelogram, monosyllabic. Now this next word's tricky. Let's hear where the accents are. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. So the tear is going to be your major accent. I might have a couple of metags on this word. I'm, I'm grossly misappropriating trope for English, but you'll get the idea. So the tear is going to get the etnachta. So like this, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Now let's look back at the Shema. And we're going to chant it one more time. And you'll see in the English, I put in the pause where the psik goes, where you see there. So chanting just the trope marks. Tipcha et nachta, mercha, tipcha, mercha, pause, sof pasuk. And now with the Hebrew. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai. Pause. Echad. Looking at the rest of Kriyat Shema, or the whole of the Shema, you'll notice now in, in future uh, uh, lessons, some of the words will be whited out, and that's because we haven't learned those trope families yet, and that I have line numbers. So if you look at line one, the word Ve'ahavta is not going to be chanted right now. We're just going to look at them. But these two verses mean, you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, b'chol levavcha, with all of your soul, u'v'chol nafshecha, and with all your might, u'v'chol me'odecha. Line one, if we read it, I'm just reading, uh, omit the whited out word. So line one, eight Adonai Elohecha. And what we want to do with the trope marks right now is emphasize the accent. Okay, line two. Now, uh, you, I just need to point out, under the kaf in line two, so in the word bechol, you'll notice that the vowel called kamatz is longer. It looks like a T, but a longer T. When you see that, that vowel, which is normally pronounced ah, should be pronounced o. Oh. So, uh, I'll go ahead and learn line two. Bechol levavecha. Look at where that meta is. So you get a secondary accent. Bechol levavecha. Next word. Uvechol nafshecha. And then the final word. Uvechol meodecha. Now let's look at just the tropes. And if we just chant the tropes, line one. Tipcha munach et nachta. Line two. Mercha tipcha sof pasuk. And again, just to bring to your attention, those metags, 
is, those are those secondary accents. So make sure that you emphasize those syllables on the um, first word of line two. The, uh, the bet there gets a secondary accent, but the music moves on the last letter because that's where the mercha is. On the last word, though, that meteg is indicating how you chant the sof pasuk. So, uvechol me'odecha sof pasuk. So, let's uh, chant verses 1 and 2. First, we're going to read the Hebrew. Then we're going to chant the trope marks. And then we put them together. So, first reading the Hebrew. Eight Adonai Elohecha. Line 2. Bechol levavecha. Uvechol nafshecha. Uvechol meodecha. Just the tropes. Line 1. Tipcha. Munach et nachta, line two. Mercha tipcha sof pasuk. Putting them together, lines one and two. Eight Adonai Elohecha, Bechol levavecha, Uvechol nafshecha, Uvechol meudecha. And now we just take what we learned and apply it to the remainder of the Shema, Kriyat Shema. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. And you'll notice the line numbers don't correspond with the verse numbers. The line numbers are just there to separate out phrases within a verse. So line 3, we're not going to read at all because we have not learned any of those trope marks, even though the second word seems to have a munach, and you might think you know that. But we will talk about that another day. There's a whole thing about that. Line four, the only words that we concern ourselves with are the two uh, last words, which are hayom al levavecha, which means today on your heart. But this whole verse means, and all these words which I commend you this day shall be on your heart. So let's read the two words that are left on line four. Hayom al levavecha. Again, Hayom al levavecha. The trope marks are Tipcha sof pasuk. Again, Tipcha sof pasuk. Putting them together. Hayom al levavecha. Again, Hayom. Al levavecha. Here's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, which means you shall teach them faithfully or diligently to your children, and you shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you go on your way, when you lie down, and when you rise up or get up in the morning. So line 5, we're not going to address. Line 6, we read, Vedibarta. Bam. Now notice where the trope mark is. I, I've often heard many people when they read the Shema that they read that first word Vidibarta, but that is impossible because the trope mark tells you the accent is on the last letter, Vidibarta, and that elides or connects with Bam. Vidibarta Bam. We skip line seven and go to line eight. Notice there's a meteg at the beginning of the word, so the u of uveshoch becha is accented. Notice under the shin, the kamatz vowel, that's that long vowel, is pronounced o and not a. So that first word is uveshoch becha, and then the last word uvkumecha. Uvkumecha, I'm sorry, uvkumecha. So line six. The Dibarta Bam, and then line eight, Uv Shoch Becha, Uv Kumecha. Chanting the tropes, line six, Tipcha et Nachta, line eight, Tipcha Sof Pasuk. Let's make it a little clearer. And again, there I've indicated that uh, Kamatz Katan, that long Kamatz on line eight, that's the O vowel. So uh, here we go again. Now, we're going to put them together. This is tricky. Line six. 
Here we have a trope mark, bam, you know, the etnachta under the bam. And etnachta has two notes, basically. Etnachta, bam, bam. And bam has one syllable. Now, I've often heard people try to do this, bam. Technically, you're not supposed to do that. That's not the intent of the, the trope. What you're supposed to do is use the trope as an accent. So for one syllable words, you uh, get rid of a little bit of the music. So instead of going bomb, just sing the accented note, the hmm, the last note on the one syllable. So you just get bam. So if I were to put the tibcha et nachta on top of vidibarta bam, I would chant it like this. Vidibarta bam. That's it. Just simple. To go vidi barta bam sort of misses the point or the understanding of the punctuation marks. You're saying, and you shall speak of them. Not, and you shall speak of them. You're not really harping on the them so much. Because you're pausing after an akta, it's already going to be emphasized. So once again, vidi barta bam. And then line eight, we read the words, uv shoch becha, uv kumecha. We chant the tropes. We put them together. Line 6 and line 8, subsequent. Then you take a pause for line 7. Going on to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8. So here we have, they shall be a sign upon your hands, and they shall be uh, for frontlets between your eyes. So figuratively, what that means is that these words of the Shema, they shall be a sign upon your hand. In other words, they're going to guide your hands throughout the day. If you're mindful that there's only one God, you'll, you'll, you'll do stuff in the world with your hands that, that uh, preserve those values. And then, of course, if they're going to be a sign between your eyes, if they're going to be frontless between your eyes, that means as you see the world, you see them with the understanding that God's in charge. But if you took that literally, you'd take the words and literally put them on your hand and between your eyes, and they look a little something like this. These are called phylacteries or tefillin. And this is an actual thing. It's Barbie wearing tefillin. And by the way, trivia... Barbie is Jewish. Look that up. Google Barbie and Jewish. You'll be amazed. But um, the bottom line is that these uh, uh, words taken literally would look something like that. But uh, here they are without that picture. So we're going to read the words first. Line 9. Uk shartam leot al yadecha. Notice the accent. Line 10. Vehayu Letotafot bein einecha. And notice on the word letotafot, there's the metag, so you have that secondary accent. Just chanting the trope marks, line 9. Mercha tibcha et nachta, line 10. Mercha tibcha mercha sof pasuk. Line 9, reading and then chanting the tropes and then putting them together, line 9. Ukshartam leot al yadecha, tropes, mercha tibcha et nachta, Put them, putting them together. Ukshartam leot al yadecha, line 10, Hebrew, vehayu letotafot bein einecha, line 10, trope, mercha tibcha mercha. Sofpasuk, line 10, with the tropes chanted together. Vehayu letotafot bein enecha. Let's put it all together. Ukshartam leot al yadecha. Vehayu letotafot bein enecha. Now, here we have Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9, which is the end of the first paragraph. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. 
uchtavtam al mezuzot beitecha uvisharecha. Now the first trope under uchtavtam we have not learned. But if you look at the rest of these, you see mercha, tipcha, and sofpasuk, we have learned them. However, there's a special way to chant these when you get to the end of a reading. And that would be called sof aliyah, and we're not ready to learn that. And so this is the end of the lesson.